This is Al. Hello. Hey, what's happening, Tom? Not much, Al. Tom, I got to talk to you, brother. I've been uh, out in California for a little over a year. and uh, Let me guess, you're from the East Coast. Yeah, from New York. How did I know? Yeah. <laughs> you got it. Well, I've been listening to your show for a little over a year, and uh, a year ago I was agreeing with every word you said, and I started to stray, and I need to know how far I've strayed. I got a girlfriend. She's about 20. Strike one. Old. Oh, yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. Like You're 22 know. years old. Why do you have a girlfriend? Uh, well, you see, I was playing. Man, I've been playing for since I was a young kid. Man, no, it doesn't matter, I, Al. What do you do for a living? I'm in a band. You're in a band. Uh, yeah. you, are you Have you had a platinum album yet? No, not yet. That's what I moved out here to Played do. Played an arena gig yet? yet? No. No. All right, so you, in other words, have not attained your dream. Not yet, not yet. And you are not ready for a girlfriend. Yeah, but she's super supportive. You know, I, that's what that's what kind of uh, changed changed what I was doing. You know, uh, I was I was drawn from chick to chick. We were they always act supportive chick. until you start becoming successful, Al. Well, you think she's gonna try to tear me down once I? Al, down? they like, women know intuitively that once you become more successful, hotter, younger chicks are gonna become available to you. Well, yeah. And so what they do is they try to get in the way of your success. Take it from me. But she kind of wants that. Don't you think she would want that success to, to have the money and the... No, because with women, whether they know this consciously or subconsciously, they know that it's possible that you'll just uh, move on to somebody younger and hotter. So you don't think she's going to want me to continue? I, I just don't... Women are that. dream killers, Al. You can't see it now because you're not successful now. Yeah, I just don't see her being like that. Well, uh, again, you're not successful yet. All right, let me. You're probably gonna blow up this too. She, uh, she thinks it would be more financial, financially, uh, you know, wise of us to move in together. Well, why doesn't she just get a roommate? Oh, I have a roommate right now. Right. Okay. So uh, she should get a roommate if if it'll be financially uh, better. Uh, she'd be better off. Yeah, I guess she just wants to spend more time together. That I, she wants to know what you're doing all the time. So what should I do, Tom? Let me know what's up. Well. What I would do is not have a girlfriend. Do you think I should ditch her and just yep. go back to night by night? Correct. Are you kidding? You, you're a musician. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. But she, uh, I just, I, I managed to balance everything, you know? Oh, no, pal. Oh, that's crazy. You're looking for oh. me to give you my blessing. I'm not doing it. Yeah, yeah, I was looking for it, Tom. I know you always... You're sticking to your guns. You're sticking to your guns. Can I pal, get... pal, let, me, let me point something out to you. I grew up in New York City. Yeah. And I was trying to make it in show business. In, in my case, it's what I do now. Yeah. I have a lot of experience with this, Al. And you didn't, you, you didn't settle down with anybody for... Oh, I got married. I, no, I made the mistakes. I made the mistakes. And they tore you up? <laughs> Are you kidding me? How about oh. the time I was living in... Um, I'll just say the cities. I was living in Phoenix, and I got my first big, big, big offer to come to L.A. And she was working at a job making $14,000 a year. Yeah. And I said to her, don't worry about it. I'll give you $14,000 a year. Yeah. Then you just take your time, find a job. She said, oh, no. Oh, no. What about my career? Well, your career, you're making $14,000 a year. We ended up breaking up. It just got worse and worse for you, Tom? Yes. Uh. Women don't like it when they see you becoming more successful because they fear that you will leave. And you might. So I should nip it in the bud before it... Uh... That's right. All right, Tom, can I give a shout-out to my band out here in the South Bay? Go, for it. Go ahead, Al. Pet the dog, baby. Listen to... <laughs> Thanks for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. The boys just never, 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 never learn. They never, never learn. Juan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm okay. Man, I uh, just got to say, you're the bomb. You're like, everything you say is correct. But check it out. I'm 29 right now, and um, I wish I would have known about you a year ago. I've only been listening for less than a year. Uh -huh. I hope my son listens to you, but I got a, I got a big problem. I married this girl. About three years ago, um, 
she got pregnant, then I got married, you know, all the wrong things that you say to do. Right. But what I'm worried about right now is uh, she's from Mexico, she doesn't have papers, and I just don't understand, you know, we always argue. Now, you're that. a citizen, correct? I'm a citizen. All right, and wait a minute. Uh, she doesn't have papers? No. Well, once she married you, did you apply for papers? The thing I told her, she said, well, can you help me? I said, sure, I'll help you. But I feel she wants me to take her by the hand and drag her over there. And But she tells me right now that the law says there's nothing that she can do about it right now because of, of something. I don't know. I don't really believe that. All right. Well, I'm, you don't believe it? Why? You think she wants to leave you? No, I, I, I don't think she wants to leave me. I mean, we still live together and we're married and everything like that. I mean, we argue a lot, but... The thing is, is that I know something like they set aside so many visa numbers or when somebody marries a citizen, you know, it's easier to, to get some kind of a legal resident card. But it's just like, to me, it's like the last thing on her list. It's, it's not that important. And I didn't realize, I didn't realize to ask her when I was younger, when, when I met her, because she was working. So I figured, okay, she must have some kind of papers. And now I realize... That doesn't that, tell you anything. Yeah, it doesn't, because she got a letter from Social Security that said, um, your records don't match here. Can you please come into one of our offices? Uh-huh. So um, I'm just kind of worried, like, the, you know, I, I volunteer for a, um, a component of the U.S. Coast Guard, and they, wa they want to do uh, security background checks on everybody. Oh, 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 and you're harboring an illegal alien. <laughs> That's what I'm kind of worried about. Well, uh, yeah, pal, let me stop you. You're harboring an illegal alien. Mm. So what do I do here? Well, I think you're getting into the Coast Guard. Well, I'm not getting into it. I've been doing it for 10 years. It's a civilian component. If they if they do a background check on you, you're screwed. Nothing's going to happen to me, though, will it? Pal, it's illegal to harbor an illegal alien. Wow. When you, when you marry someone without papers, you have to go down to the INS, and you have to apply for the paperwork. So I have to I have to. No, you have to go with her. Yeah. Or she has to go, but then she's going to have to bring you. And then you have to sign all kinds of papers saying things like, you will support her for 10 years. You cannot apply for welfare. If the two of you split up, you are responsible for her for 10 years. Do you know that? Uh, I've heard it before from your shows, yeah. Yeah, well, 10 years. Wow. And you have to make uh, over $15,000 a year. I don't know how much you make. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people who call this show make a lot less than I would expect, right? Fifteen. Do you make over 15000 uh, probably. I haven't really calculated it. You're not even sure? How much do you make per week? No, I make about 300 That's, uh, you're on the cost. Well, I make 400 400 It's still 400. lower than 15 No, 400 if you work 52 weeks a year, 400 puts you over 20000 oh, Okay, there we go. Then, yeah, I do make over 15000 All right. But, I mean, here's the other problem you're going to run into. Uh, if you go to the INS, they're going to say, where's she been? That's, yeah, that's... <laughs> So you need an immigration attorney like yesterday. And that's assuming you want to keep her. Well, I do, despite the fact that it's like, oh, it's just so many problems. So much arguments. Basically, like, she wants to say it's my way or the highway, and I'm thinking... Well, you, know, you, may, have the, you may have the you may have the highway uh, made out for you here. I mean, I'm not an attorney... But I have known women who have uh, gone through immigration, pro the immigration process. And I know all the questions they ask, and I know all the hoops you have to jump through. And I honestly believe that uh, even though you married her, the fact that you've been married for three years and never showed up down at INS, that's not good. But if you want to break up with her, this could be your perfect opportunity. Okay. For divorce, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, in fact, it's it's the it's the perfect crime. You could head down to the INS and say, "I my wife didn't tell me she didn't have papers. I didn't know what I was doing. I'm turning myself in." Don't do this without an attorney, by the way. I'm turning myself in. And uh, all they'll want to know is where she is. I mean, again, talk to an immigration attorney. But I'm telling you. Getting married to somebody does not guarantee citizenship. You have to then show up, show up with the paperwork, prove that it's a real marriage, prove it's not a scam, prove you've got income, sign a guarantee that you will support that person for 10 years. 10 years. Okay, this is one more question. Yeah. If I, if I split up with her, 
What can she do as far as child support, not being a, a, any kind of citizen? Or well, as long as she's living, let me tell you something. The state of California doesn't care if she's a legal or an illegal immigrant. Mm -hmm. But so the trick is you don't want her divorcing you in California. Uh, again, you run this through an attorney, but it's my understanding. you What you want is first let her get sent back to Mexico then let her figure it out from there. So I'm going to cover my butt. Y your butt comes first. And if she's treating you like crap, well, too bad. you got a big hammer you can swing right now. Yeah, I told her. I was like, you, you better be lucky he doesn't make us call you at work. I told her you better answer that phone. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, Juan, uh, think twice about All what right. you want to do here. If, if she is becoming impossible, now remember, she may run off with your kids, and you may spend the rest of your life fighting to see your kids. I don't know how that relationship is going. But... Um, Again, if you want out of this relationship, talk to an immigration attorney. You may have a way out. I mean, without having to be financially... Uh... Well, as you know, in Mexico, they're not as uh, scrupulous or stringent about rules like child support. They're not as sophisticated as we are in California. If you've ever known anyone from Mexico who's ever gotten divorced and ever collected a dime of child support, I'd like to meet them. <laughs> All right, Tom. I'll keep in touch with you. I'll let you know what happens. All right, Juan. Let me know. All right, thanks. Appreciate the call. Boy, there's the perfect crime, huh? You're married to somebody. You later find out she doesn't have papers, and she's a raging bitch. What do you do? You get your attorney, and you two of you get on the phone, you call the INS, you say, I didn't know I was harboring an illegal alien. I want to do anything I can to cooperate with the authorities. <laughs> you send that bitch packing. 1-800-5800-TOM <laughs> tom is our telephone number. It's Lee on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom. Lee. How's it going? I'm okay. Right on. Well, I just want to... To tell everyone who's listening, you are right. I'm 26 years old, and I was with my girl for nine years before I married her. We were married for a year and a half. We got married at 23. I'm 26 now. And um, I basically walked in and caught her cheating on me with a friend. That's what two happens. Months after, two months after my son was born. That's what happens. And, you know, it's like I sit here and I wish and, damn, why couldn't I you? But I've gotten into you before. Well. Because I get married at 23, stupidest thing I've ever done. Now I'm paying for it. She cheats and I pay. That's what happens. That's I the system. She cheats with your friend and then you have to pay her money. Yep, 470 a month. Uh-huh. $470 a month. And what happened to your friend, by the way? Oh, they're still together. Isn't that great? What a friend. Uh-huh. And it's like I sit here and I just... And I get my son every other weekend. Isn't that nice? So she can have sex with your friend? Yep. Yeah. That's great. Well, uh, the story, we need to hear stories like yours. I'd rather we didn't. I'd rather nobody was making these mistakes. But, uh, yes, I, I keep telling the boys, there's no benefit in ever getting married. There is no benefit in having children with a woman uh, unless you've been together a very long time and you're very, 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 very happy. And you've I attained your dream. Huh? I thought she was the one, too. Uh-huh. Because I was with her for nine years. She was my high school sweetheart. Yeah, well, that never works. Yeah. In rare instances does it work. And uh, what was your dream in life, Lee? I wanted to be a teacher. Are you a teacher? No, I'm uh, working in a warehouse. Right. So you gave up your dream for her. Yep. And then she uh, nailed your friend. Yep. And she nails you for $470 a month. Yep. So was she a dream killer, Lee? Big time. Yeah. And I've been hurting ever since we split up, basically. Well, I tell the boys that women are dream killers, and women get uh, really pissed when I say that. But there you are, another example, another dream killer, another dream killer attack. It's very true. And I've, uh, I've been listening to you for like three weeks now, and it's, every day I drive to work, I, I listen.
Uh-huh. And it's just, you crack me up. Because everything you say is absolutely the truth. And I'm only 26, and I just thought, oh, I have the one. You know? And yeah. Oh, yeah, we're the exception to the rule. <laughs> uh-huh. I was so wrong, and it's, I really wish I knew about this show. Well, Lee, I wish you knew about it, too. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800. Tom Talk radio is a pimple on America's ass. It has nothing to do with anything. Okay? It is cheap entertainment for people stuck in their cars. It is not a political force of any kind at all. Justin, hello. Yeah. Yeah. How you doing? Okay. Tom, I just want to talk to you about uh, this girl that I dated for a while, and it was on um, for five years, and... Uh, you know, she bought me this uh, really expensive watch for Christmas, which was like sixteen hundred bucks, and she wants to. Uh, she wanted. She told her parents that she was gonna. I was gonna have to pay it back, and she, when it was a Christmas gift. And uh, you know, she, she's basically a rich chick who uh, took me down the gutter with her. Basically, I, I didn't let her trash my dreams, though. You know, I'm, I'm I'm going to law school right now. And but basically, you know, she she wanted to become a singer, so she moved from back east out out here to L. A. And her parents are rich. She doesn't even have to work. You know, and and. So why does she need you to pay back for the watch? Because she didn't want her parents to um, figure out that she bought me this thing, you know. So she, you're not paying her, are you? Oh hell no! I would never do that. Give her the watch yeah. back. Here, take it back. I did. I, I sent it back, and I just said basically, I don't, you know, I don't want anything to do with you anymore. And but the but the father called me and said he's going to rain legal hell on me. He can't do that. I know. That's that's what I'm saying. You know. I mean, I just don't understand what what the whole concept with this chick was. You know, like. What was what was her whole deal? You know, I just wanted to get your opinion on it because, you know, you're the man. And well, I, uh, you, first of all, you're in law school, so you've not attained your dream yet. Right, you right. You should not I'm have not. a girlfriend. I period. I know. I mean, do you think I should have just ended this a long time ago? Yes. You, that I... you you should not have a girlfriend. No, you're right. When your last name is Esquire, that is when you can have a girlfriend. Right, right. No, I, I hear you. Not Wait. until. But I just, you know, I just basically, you know, when. You just think that you're in love with somebody. Well, but you, you have to forget about it. You don't know what you're doing. You're too young, and you're too inexperienced, and you don't know what you're doing. I know what you should be doing, because I've already made all those mistakes. Right. And uh, learn from them. Right. But, like, her parents basically give her a credit card, and she can do whatever she wants with it. And Wonderful. Uh, fine. Let her buy you lunch. Let her buy you a car. Right. Who cares? But the point is, no girlfriend. No, I, I hear you, man. I, I appreciate the advice. I really do. And, uh, I, I'm just, you know, it's just, you know, when you're with somebody a long time, you just think that, like this other guy, this other caller that says with her for nine years and he caught her cheating, you just don't know, you know? Well, but, see, that's why you need rules. The reason we have rules is so when when your genitalia are speaking louder than your, your common sense, right? you can look at the rule. Right. No, I definitely hear you on that. It doesn't matter how hot you are for her or how wonderful you think she is. You haven't attained your dream yet. So basically you're saying is when I attain my dream and I, and I, and I financially make myself stable is when I can make my own decisions and, and, and tell her to kiss off if I want well, to. No, right? you can make your own decisions now, and your decision is you don't want anything to do with her at this time. Right. Yeah, and then you know, and then you know, because she was a singer, she she would go out, you know, with other managers, or whatever. Who knows what she was doing? You know, what I mean. And trust me, how do you think a lot of chicks get those auditions? Right, right, exactly. Trust me when I tell you. Uh, you're the man, Tom, and that's why that's why I call. I just wanted to get your advice. I mean, what have you said to her? Hey, what are you doing out with this guy till midnight, uh, one in the morning? What are you doing? Right. Which I'm sure exactly. she's done. Oh, he wants to talk to me. He likes the way I sing. He right. wants to buy me right. dinner exactly. and bottle of wine. He wanted to talk to me about the, the recording session. <laughs> right. No, exactly. No, and basically, everybody that she's ever talked to has dropped her. You know, basically, they're probably just trying to use her for whatever. That's exactly right. They dropped her because she didn't put out. Maybe that's what it was. Or maybe she did put out and then stopped putting it. Well, the parents, like I said, were rich, and they bought her a, a, a condo out here, and they just sold it. And, um, you know, maybe it was because, you know, she wouldn't put out to these other guys or she, and she wasn't basically making it, but they sold the condo. And, uh, you know, I, and now they're, now she's moving back east for good again. So, good. I, I, yeah, exactly. I said, you know, I said, good, see you later. I don't but, care. but do not make that same mistake again. No, I won't. Get laid, yes. Have fun, <laughs> yes. Party, yes. Have threesomes and foursomes, absolutely. 
Exactly. Have sex on the beach, have sex hanging upside down, have fun, <laughs> but do not have a girlfriend. Just because of the law school or whatever, right? Yeah, your dream. Don't let no, just don't let no trick trash your dreams. That's they all. will do it. They will. They'll they will. Down, right? They will. They'll take you down to the gutter. That's right. And I, don't, I can't let that happen again, Tom. That's right. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate the call. Justin, thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. Nanette on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. I have to tell you, I love your voice. Thank you. And there are some days when you just infuriate me, and other days when I'd love to have your handprint on my ass. Oh, sometimes both. <laughs> sometimes both. Today, though, I wanted to let you know, that I agree with you when you're telling guys to kick the nasty bitches to the curb. There are a lot of crazy women out there. Um, however, the guy who called who was married to a girl from Mexico, and they have kids together. Yeah. If he's done with her, that's all fine and dandy, but it sounds like he's trying to get out of his responsibilities as a father based on a technicality. And so I was a little bit disappointed that you didn't, because usually everything you say is, is pretty right on, that you didn't say, yeah, get rid of her, but, hey, you know, you should take care of your kids. Well, put it this way. Uh, he may want to have custody of his kids. That's fine. Uh, but by the same token, uh, if she absconds to Mexico with his kids and he doesn't get to see them at all, yeah, I, I happen to believe that, uh, although the law doesn't do this, I happen to believe that uh, uh, child support should be directly linked to visitation. If you don't see your kids, you shouldn't be paying. Now, if you don't want to see your kids, that's another story. Yeah, and I guess that needed to be, uh, you know, uh, have the distinction made there. And if you're talking about, I don't think she's going to be one that's going to run away with the kids. Why not? Um, well, you're right. You're right. I guess that just that distinction wasn't made. But, and and don't most women uh, want to be with their kids and uh, want custody of their kids? Yeah. Now, now he may have a lot of advantages here, and I'll tell you why. Those kids are American citizens. Absolutely. And uh, they're not Mexican citizens. They're Americans. And so uh, he could very well make a case. I'm an American. My kids are Americans. She was breaking the law. She should go back to Mexico. See ya. There you go. And that's what I wanted to hear from you. So that was the piece of advice that I was missing. Well, I, I, you know what? I, it didn't sound to me like he wants to get rid of his kids. It sounds no, okay. to me like he doesn't want to give money to a bitch. I understand that, too. So I just wanted to hear that part of it. Yeah, but I would say if she absconds to Mexico with the kids, he shouldn't send her a dime if he can get away with it. Uh, okay, I'll agree with you on that. If she's using them as a tool, then that's a sad thing for her. And she's her using family. him as a tool right now. Yeah. I mean, my God, she gets married to him without telling him she's not a citizen? <laughs> well, you'd think that you'd know that about... Well, he said he assumed it because she had a job, which was stupid to assume. But <laughs> you know, here in Los Angeles, that's really the first question you have to ask just about anybody you meet. <laughs> Show me your green card. Yeah, or, or your passport or something. <laughs> there you go. Well, you're right on, and, and it makes sense, and thanks so much. And when you come up to Seattle, I sure hope that one day uh, I can get your handprint on my ass. Oh, don't worry, Nanette. I'll take care of it. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. Like us. Like us. 1-800-5800-866. He doesn't know you're leaving. He uh, thinks you're staying. Well, how can I stay with somebody when they sat there and they lied? Again? Why are you still with him now? Because I'm, I'm a girl. I'm stupid. Okay. I'll buy that. Kevin, hello. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, can you hear me? What's can you it? hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. What can I do for you? Okay. I'm in a little bit of a dilemma here. I uh -huh. met a woman through some mutual friends of mine, and we've been dating for about six or seven months. And uh, we decided we was going to get married. And we're about three weeks from the from the wedding. And uh, she's been talking on the chat rooms on the Internet and stuff like that. And now she's spending more time on the computer at night because I work. Oh... From uh, if I get up at 5:30 every morning and I go to work and I don't get home about 7:38, quarter to nine. Who is she chatting with? Uh, just some other. She said friends of hers. It's in. Uh, she lived. She did live in. Uh, uh, in, in Houston, and uh, we met. I was living down there in Houston too, 
and we met through some friends of ours, and I had to come back home to help be with my mom and my stepfather because they're getting up there in age and they need some help. And she moved up here with me, and I give her just about anything that she wants. And my parents tried to help her out and stuff, and I just feel like that uh, she's spending more time on that computer and what she does with me because she don't come to bed till about 12, 1, 2, 3 o'clock. Well, why would you get married to somebody who does that? Because I love her. Yeah, but why do you love someone who does that? Because you don't love you? Well, she says she loves me. And she I know what she says, but that way, see, people frequently say one thing and do another. Uh-huh. And uh, last night we got into another big fight over the computer and stuff. Well, the computer's not the issue. Uh, it's just a symptom of the issue. Uh-huh. Now, where did she move from? Houston. Houston, okay. Yeah, so, we live in Texas. And who are these people? Yes, I, I know. How, how, how many people in Houston do you think are up at 3 a.m. chatting on the computer? Oh, quite a few. Yeah? These are... Girlfriends? Uh, girlfriends and guy friends. The guy friends. And who are the guy friends? Uh, some of those uh, guys that she, uh, she's got a girlfriend, and uh, she met through through her. And they're all friends, and uh, they never did go out on dates or anything. They just mm. all party together. Well, that's what they've told you. Right. You have no idea what she was doing in Houston until you had her move in. You have no idea. You had a long-distance relationship. Well, uh, I, like I said, I used to live in Houston, too. That's where I used to work at. Right, but then you left and she was still there, right? No. Well, you both... We, we, we both met down there in Houston. And you moved together? And we moved together up here to help my parents here in Dallas. All right, so you didn't go first. She came with you. Right. Right. Now, uh, you understand that uh, there is software out there that uh, you can read what she's chatting. Uh, you can read what she's saying. Do you uh, care to do that? Oh, really? Oh, yeah. How do you... Well, because I'm, I'm computer illiterate. I don't know about a computer. Oh, and she's counting on that, too. Hang on. I'll have Dean uh, give you a, a website you can go to. And for, uh -huh. ni for 99 bucks tomorrow, you can be reading everything she says tonight. Oh, really? Oh, really? Hang on there, Kevin. We'll uh, help you out. Stay right there.